Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Stuck for ideas for the perfect gift? Why not get them a gift card? You can buy Sewing Street and Yarn Lane gift cards loaded up with anything from £10 to £500. Shop our gift cards online at www.sewingstreet.com or www.yarnlane.com or purchase them via our UK call centre on 0800 001 4433. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media and pick up some top tips from us too. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433 and for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being well our family run customer service team are on call 24 7. they're full of friendly warm-hearted individuals all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible and not only will they take your order they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey so you never miss out Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. If you're a Sewing Street or Yarn Lane customer, no matter how many times you check out in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. So don't wait to add the item you want to your basket and check out. You will only pay one PMP even if you check out multiple times in one day. Missed the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. 
Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favorite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. In need of a crafting fix, there are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. And welcome to Yarn Lane. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. Very exciting day. Look at my desk. Oh, I'm so excited. I've just spent a while. It's why a bit late talking. No, I wasn't late talking to Jane about all her beautiful blankets. Aren't they gorgeous? We have got blankets. We've got kits. We've got books. But, but first of all, just a quick word about the Yarn Lane Mystery Christmas Crochet Along. Woo! Unfortunately, we haven't got any more kits yet. I'm still... Still trying to get some more kits, but some of the yarn is stuck in a port. So when it's released, hopefully we'll get more. But we have now got quite a lot of you, quite a lot of you on our Facebook group, which is for members only. Hello to all of you. It's been a pleasure seeing all of your amazing squares. Special, special congratulations to Lynn Sharples, who was the first person to finish all 24 very impressed. Anyway, lovely for you to have joined you all in the last week when you've been making them all. This morning, um, we released the pattern for week two. They all know what it is because they've seen it, but I thought you would like to see it. This is Christmas Love, week two. Just a little, just, just to prove that I've made it, guys. Look, I've made one. I have made one. So this is Christmas Love, week two. Anyway, I'll be chatting to you all week and I will let everyone else who isn't part of the Yarn Lane Mystery Christmas Crochet Along, let, I'll let you know as soon as we get any more kits. Um, we're just having problems with one of them that seems to be stuck in a ship. Anyway, anyway, first of all, um, I have been trying to get Jane on air for quite a long time because A, I love her blankets and B, I know that you will too. She is the queen of the crochet blanket, I think. Um, I went to a show once several years ago and saw kits for all her blankets and I just couldn't choose because they're so beautiful, I didn't even buy one. Just because you know what it's like sometimes, you, you just can't choose, so you just can't buy anything. Um, Anyway, we have got kits for her blankets, but she has got a brand new book, The Fruit Garden Crochet Blanket, that I want to talk about first. So welcome, Jane. Thank you for coming Thank you on for having me. Lane. At last. At last. It's Finally. taken a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> yes. Because the yarn keeps being out of stock. Yes. Um, so your brand new book, The Fruit Garden Crochet Blanket, yes. it's not a crochet pattern, this, is it? Not just. Well, it's not just a crochet pattern. It, um, it started with I, I do crochet alongs like your Christmas crochet alongs right so I do a yearly pretty much yearly crochet along mm. and I was inspired to do a crochet along by the work of May Morris William Morris's daughter right um, and it launched in 2020 which obviously was a time when everybody was you <laughs> at know home. at home mm. wondering what to do feeling a bit out of sorts not knowing what you know what's yes. going on in the world so Usually my crochet alongs are, you know, relatively popular, but this one just went off the scale. Mm. Um, so what happened was we launched it as a crochet along with two colourways. Um, uh, we launched this, can you see the cushion here? That's yes. a colourway. Actually, they're behind you. 
uh, those two there were These the two. two. Yeah, so we launched those as the crochet along, mm. and then because um, it was so beautiful. popular, we then launched the one in front of you on your desk, which is this one. Yeah, which I called "Love Is Enough" after William Morris's book of yes. poetry and then we now have a fourth colorway which is this one which is called red house which is the one that's on the which cover is on the, the cover of the book so because it was such a oh, big there's, look at there, there's a, that's, look it, that's at red that. house so oh. that's made in organic cotton gorgeous really lovely um Beautiful. cotton one so yes yeah, so it was inspired by the work of may morris but also william and the whole arts and crafts movement thing and i think because it was a crochet along and because it brought people together over lockdown, it was actually really great that it was, you know, kind of the arts and crafts movement inspired by, yes, you know, it's true. kind of like really cool. Um, but we felt it needed a book. So it does. Yeah. And it is a book. Yes. It's not a pattern. Well, it is no, a pattern book. It's the pattern's in here, but it isn't just a pattern book. It's not just I a mean, book. I mean, when you look at it, let me just give you a quick sneak peek. Look, you've got beautiful photography of all of them and this is the hard bit you then once you get the book you've got to decide which colour way to have. <laughs> look yes. at them all but there's the whole introduction isn't there the why you did it the yeah. history behind yeah. it pictures yeah. yeah i mean i was really really lucky to be um supported by the william morris society Amazing. so they yeah so they gave me permission to use quite a lot of their images well um, i love the way you've put you know some of the original artwork and then you've got your creation yeah so it shows it. my kind of inspiration that's actually a hanging that's in the VNA mm. um, so they kind of give me gave me permission to use the images too so yeah and then yeah and then we go through and then you talk about um, oh, now those are um, we called it out in the wild it's six people that did their own colorways <gasps> oh wow over 2020 <gasps> yeah Gosh. amazing and the kind of their stories behind it as well so that was a really nice little bit of the book to do. It's beautiful, yeah. isn't it? So yeah. this is, that, that, I think that's lovely because that's part of the whole crochet yeah. long, isn't it? Yeah. And oh, then there's got a lot of viewers now messaging in, absolutely loving this, loving it. Very excited, love Jane's work. The Persian Towels Blanket has sort of jumped into my basket. Ah, oh, yeah, I good, already, already. That, The Persian <laughs> Towels is the one that's behind behind Jane. So yeah. the book at the moment, this is just the book that we're going through. We'll be doing the kits. We haven't got kits for these. This is just the pattern, so you know. Uh, but obviously in here, it gives you all of the yarn that you need for whichever colour you choose. It tells you the yarn that you need, which is fab. Yeah. Um, all the notes and lots and lots and lots of information which is really important and I look at this look it's so step by step isn't it there's the you know every single round Jane's written it in words she's written it in diagrams it is beautiful anyway that's the book it's beautiful I mean it just I just wanted to give you some introduction into Jane's work if you haven't ever seen her designs and you haven't seen her patterns before this this is what Jane is all about I mean it is beautiful isn't it so if you want the book I think we have more people that have it in their basket than have checked out so you really need to check out quite quickly 12.95 for the book everything you've got and it's got all the different colorways in it as well i mean it's just mm. stunning mm. it's difficult to choose which so let's see you know this yeah. is the first time we've had jane on air see what you think you know obviously this is this isn't beginner's crochet really is it um what would you what it, level no i kind of say i'm intermediate to higher right technical so you level. need to have sort of you need to have Granny squared. Uh, yeah, but you know, people, I really think crochets, if they like it, they'll do it. <laughs> yeah, well, they really right. will. Yeah. And what I do with my crochet longs as well is they get progressively harder. So like you won't be okay. doing that, you know that edge, can you see the edge piece where you've got this rectangular piece that I called a canthus? Yeah, you yes. see that one there? You wouldn't be doing that in the beginning. You're not doing that at the beginning, you're doing the little daisy one that's like a forget okay. me that I called it. And so then, if you've held a hook and you've done a bit of single crochet or you've done a chain yeah. um, and you've maybe done a granny square. Yeah, you, I think, yeah. This I is think, the next stage. I think so, it just gets progressively harder. Mm. And like with all my patterns, I do the step-by-step -step images the whole way along. So you've got the, the written instructions and a little image to guide you. Right. I've also done videos, so there's technique uh, videos as well. Okay. So if you want the pattern book, you need to check out quite quickly for that. So I'm going to go through the kits. Now, it was hard choosing which kits as well to do. I asked Jane in the end, because she's got so many of them. I said, which is the most popular? So that's what we do. <laughs> so shall we start with the Persian tiles? So that's the one that's behind you. Oh, the book's sold out now. 
gone. <laughs> gone. It's gone now. Wow. Gone. But it is lovely, isn't it? We'll get some more in. Don't worry. The Persian tiles is the blanket that is hanging behind Jane. So what was what was your inspiration for this? So this was kind of um, Persian architecture, really. Tiles. You know how we all go on holiday and see sort of Moroccan and <laughs> yes. Spanish tiles, yes. and yeah. yeah, it was that really. It was kind of like the. Oh, that's uh, a lovely picture there. That's that where the colour palette came from, and then you know, I was. I often go to. I'm lucky. I live in London, so the V and A is like a. Uh, perfect place okay, for me yes. and they have an islamic room which is they've got rugs and tiles and mm. so it was kind of inspired by that okay so yes. if we have a look at the pattern then yeah they're really i mean the pattern is very clear so in this this is the full kit you get the pattern which i'm going to go through now and you get all of the yarn is that under which one is the persian it's the the one next to you Just must be on, this that's one that here. one yeah yes I think I it's seven to. colours, maybe. So all of the yarn to make the blanket that is hanging behind Jane. Now, these are the instructions. So I'm going to get Jane to talk you through how it all works. Um, now, these are going out. So you really, we have got less than half the stock available. So you really do need to check out on these. But look, very detailed. So if you think, right, I've done a granny square. I've had to go, look, this is the start. You can do that. And it just builds up. And you gain your confidence and you unpick it and then you do it the second time and you go, ha ha, I've got it now. <laughs> uh, I've got a trick. I've got a good mm -hmm. trick, which is to make things in a production line way. Right. Okay. So rather than making 16, rather than making one motif and then making it again, you make it all 16. So you really learn. So you, because otherwise you do forget, don't you? Exactly. Which exactly. is ridiculous. You know, yeah. How have I forgotten that three yeah. days later? Yeah, absolutely. But look at it, they are very, very detailed. Everything you need, and it's full colour photo, so very easy to see. And they're very close up as well. You can really see the stitches, but there's diagrams as well, because some of you are diagram people, some of you are word people. Mm -hmm. It just depends. I kind of think I'm both. I think I'm a word to start, and then I move on to the yeah, diagram. Yeah, a lot of people are. I think it's seeing that visual mm. chart helps you, yeah. I've it got helps that right. to translate yeah. it. Yeah. And there's even a Persian granny square. So there you go, she's just a granny square, but a Persian one. Yes, it is. It's all got the a way slight difference. All the way through. And yeah. there's even how to join it all together. And then there's the border as well. Yeah. So let's start with this one. Mm -hmm. What where do we go? Okay, so I've done a little um I've got some step by step pieces here. Um so as I said already, I don't know whether you can you see my hands. Um Rather than making the whole motif, yeah, you can, see, can now. you see? Yeah, there you go. So rather than making the whole motif, what I suggest people do is just make 16 of these. You've got to make 16 main motifs. Yeah, if motifs. you put that on the table, then so they'll, they can there. get quite close up yeah. for you then. There you go, look. So this is the starting point, this one. And it's really just a ring in the middle, which I think a lot of people know how to do that. Um, is and that like a magic ring? Uh, I don't do magic rings because I never put it in my patterns because it will scare people immediately because they might not know how to make it. But if you do know how to make a magic ring, then that's fine. Right, but you don't have so to. So I've started with four chain in the middle there. Someone's um, just said, do I need to, the book, sorry, to make the blanket? No, you don't. The pat the kit has got the pattern and all the yarn. The book is a separate thing. Separate entity. Mm. Someone yeah, popped in yeah. the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that's Fair what enough. happens, you see. Fair enough. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. so this is my starting point. So I would, because you've got to make 16, I would make 16 of those first and that is just a ring and some trebles and chain okay okay so i can yeah. show how to do that in a minute but then this one then is the next step yeah. so you've already made 16 of these very straightforward if you can make a granny square then you can definitely make 16 of those right and then this one with the yellow which is the next round yeah, is on daffodil now yep <laughs> four double crochet into each chain space nice so pretty straightforward um, the pattern is in UK terms, I should say. Oh, good. So it's all UK. I do mostly UK and some are also US. Right. But mostly UK. Okay. Um, so that's just four double crochet into each chain space. And then this one, can you see the progression? Yeah, yes. yeah, it's, it's growing. Now we're so on, so, so now we're on um, cardinal. cardinal. Yeah. We're on cardinal. I've got so all my colours here. So on this one, with crochet, you always end up increasing your stitch count because if you don't, it will start to grow like a cylinder. Right. Yeah. So on this one, I've got an increase. So I've got a double crochet again, but into every third stitch, I've done two double crochet instead of one. Okay. Right. 
Okay. So yes, then. it's feeling achievable now. Yes, isn't it? absolutely. Yeah. So you don't just do one at a time, you make 16 of yeah. those. So at that point, I think that's very straightforward. Yes, yeah? this is looking like we can do, I can okay, do this. Cool. Okay, so this is the next one. Um, if I move those along a little bit. This is double treble. Double treble, okay. Which is where double treble, logical in UK terms, is twice round the hook before you put your hook into the stitch. Okay. Um, and those. Than once. Yes. Yeah. So those are four double treble and seven chain between each okay. thing. Right. And one of the things about crochet that I think a lot of crocheters forget to do is just making sure your stitch count's right all the time. So because we're making hex. Octagons, not mm. hexagons. <laughs> octagons are eight. So always at the end of your rounds, you're making sure you've got eight of everything. Yeah. So if yeah? you just keep counting, counting and counting. Counting your eights. Right. That makes so. sense. But it's good, isn't it? Because if you go wrong the first time, then you undo it, you do it again. Then because you're working in production, the next one will probably be right. Exactly. But the third one definitely will be. Yes, yes. Unless you make the same mistake but on all 16. Yes. <laughs> or you get distracted. <laughs> yes. And you go, I thought I could do this. Yeah, yeah. So I think up to, you know, I think if you look at these, all these little steps of yeah. the motifs, you see, here we go, look, yeah, you can, yeah, if you I put them, them on the table. Yeah. You know, by the time you've got up yeah. to here, you've got really quite confident by this point. Well, and really it is, you know, it's just variations of, isn't it? So yeah. if you can do a double and you can do a treble and you can do a chain, yeah. then you can do a double treble and seven chains. Absolutely right, <laughs> Rebecca, absolutely right. I kind of think this is our biggest selling pattern, actually. Right, and so why do you think that is? I think it's one that just inspires people to crochet regardless of their level of because ability. It's so beautiful. Because they want to make it. Yeah, because it yeah. It has its own Facebook. And Jane doesn't sell them ready made, it's the only way you can get one. <laughs> it has its own Facebook group. This no. Week. Yes, it does. It's wow. bonkers. Bonkers. Its own Facebook group. Yeah. That's amazing. So the great thing about that is as well, if you struggle, you've got a bit of help <gasps> online as well. Somebody will. Yeah. That's brilliant. Yeah, so yeah. does this one have videos? Um, on the Facebook group, I think there are people that have made oh, videos, okay. yes. Yeah. But you can go on to the, join the Facebook group yep. and ask everyone, I'm stuck on round 25. Exactly. There's not exactly. that many rounds. Yeah, or email us and we'll help you as well. But actually, it's the one that, yeah, so many people have made, especially when you show the Eastern Jaws version, because that's really inspired yes. people to make it as well. So we'll show you that one in a minute, because there is another colourway available of this Persian Tiles, but we'll just finish this one. We'll show you that in a minute. Cool. So you just make all of those. Yes. And then you join them together. Yeah, absolutely. But with something in between. Um, so you've got the granny square in between. So you've got this oh, okay. oh, granny right, square yes, with so a twist in between. But this is all just the octagons all just joined together. So this motif that I've got here is not a finished one. You've got a few more rounds to do. Yeah, on no, there. but I can see where that is. Yeah. It's got rounded things, but they become a bit more pointy, yes. don't they? Yeah, so this becomes, by doing three stitches into one point, you get the point of the star coming. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful, isn't it? What's the size of that? So, I mean, I can see um, what size it's it is. It's one, it? about one metre fifteen square. Oh, yeah, 45 inches square. Yeah. So that's a really nice size to put on the back of your sofa. Yeah, kind of lap blanket, lap blanket size, yeah, yeah. I'd like to say picnic, but I'm not sure I'd want to take it on a picnic. Well, the it's great, yeah, the great thing about the yarn we've used as well, it's a wool and acrylic mix, so it can go in the washing machine. Oh, okay, yes, because it's the Starcraft Life DK, mm. so it is 75% acrylic, 25% wool. Yeah, That's lovely, isn't so it? brilliantly machine, machine washable. There are single figures left of the Persian tiles. Nice message from Joanne. I've made this blanket and found it challenging but enjoyable. I have only been basic crocheting for a couple of years. Loved it. Great. There we go. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you, Joanne. So yeah. there you go. Perfectly achievable. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So the other colourway, so it's the same blanket, but I've got it here. Let me just move this beautiful one out of the way. Is the Eastern Jewels. Yes, so this um, this, this is was made by yeah, it's it's really lovely. So I worked with a girl called Lucia Dunn with this one. So she took Persian tiles and really made it her own with her own kind of colour. I'm going to hold it up. Have you got a still? Do you want a still or do you want me to hold it up? Oh, there we are. Yeah, same thing really. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Amazing, isn't it? How oh, one design can look so beautiful, different. Beautiful, yeah. isn't it? Incredible. 
really. And this really inspired people. I think actually a lot of beginners make this one. Do because they? It, because it gives them a bit of difference, you know, with the colours. Yeah, it's really lovely, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, yeah, they're very different. I sort yeah. of want both of them. Yeah. One is winter and one is summer. Yes. Isn't it? So yes. there's mine. There's yeah. mine. <laughs> <laughs> do I look the same as that photo? I absolutely love that. So in the kit for this one, you get the Persian tiles instructions. Yes, yeah, so you get the pattern. So the pattern. But you then get also... Sorry, sorry. I'll move that out of the way. We'll confuse things otherwise. <laughs> so you get... I can use this as my tablecloth. The Persian tiles um, pattern, but you get the Eastern Jewels colourway. Mm, so how right. does that work then? Just it just tell you... Yeah, so they, it's called a colour sub document, document. So you still have to follow the pattern. Right, so use the pattern. Use the pattern, but the colour sub document tells you what colour to use on what round of oh, each octagon. Yeah, so look, C1, B1, t right. Yeah. yeah, so there's a little bit of fiddling around. So the around. difference is, I guess, with the Persian tiles, every th all of the octagons are the same colour, yes. but not with the Eastern yes, Jewels. Yes, absolutely right. right. But you've got a picture. Yes. So you can, you just yeah, you've got a picture of each octagon, so you know what you're doing. So you can still do it production line. Yes, yeah, but you'll just be picking up a different colour of yarn. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you get, oh, wow. But quite nice, I quite like the fact that you do it in production line, but you keep changing colour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So even more engaging, mm. I suppose. If you're, if you're the kind of person that doesn't um, keep concentrating for very long, yeah. then maybe this is Yes, a yeah, because one. you can really, you really have to change, change it. Colour. Um, so in the kit, let me show you, you get, this is um, special DK. Yes. This one. So you get buttermilk, lots of buttermilk, but all the buttermilk, violet, I'm going to choose the, the names here, tomato, get loads here, don't you? Um, I should know what the colours are. Vintage peach, duck egg. You can see all these colours in here now, can't you? Um, spice, fondant, mustard, um, fuchsia, pistachio, sage and storm blue. So you get all of this yarn and the pattern for the Persian tiles and the colourway for the Eastern Tiles colourway for £38.20. Beautiful. So why did you work with Lucia on this? How did that work? Yeah, I just, um, I really admired Lucia's work and I just thought that if she did Persian Tiles, it would just bring a whole different look to it. And it, re it really did. She it really, did. Yeah, she really went for it. So, um, yeah, it worked really well. It's a bit, I've got it around the wrong way, I've just realised. It's a bit sort of ice creamy almost, isn't it? Yeah, so Lucia's Italian and she okay. kind of felt that it was um, inspired <laughs> by her kind of um, village, the colours she'd find in mm. her village. So, yeah, it was to do with that okay. for her. Yeah. yeah, to me it feels almost like um, ice cream. It is ice creamy, isn't it? So maybe it's yeah. Italian ice cream. Yeah, <laughs> gelato. Yes. But what a lovely project to take on over the sort of autumn winter months yes. as well. Yeah, really nice. And it keeps you warm while you put it together as well. Yeah, that's true, actually. <laughs> it is beautiful. I think this is, I think that's my favourite one of this um, buttermilk. Really it's gorgeous, works, isn't, isn't it? it? It's a it's really lovely cream. colour. And it's not that yellowy cream. It's no, it's lovely. Just the... It's like custard, isn't it? Posh custard. Posh, yeah. This is the custard you get in the fridge. Yes, it not is. Not the one you get on the yes, shelf, Yes, it isn't is, it? yeah. It just needs some little vanilla pods <laughs> it. We should rename these. We ask for all it posh, posh custard. Posh custard. <laughs> posh custard. <laughs> I don't we think of much better names for them. Posh custard would be great, wouldn't it? That's gorgeous. Um, so, the... It's done in exactly the same way as the Persian tiles. You just need to decide which colourway or both, because I think this is very summery and that one's more wintery, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I suppose you could use it as a picnic. I'm saying don't use this, but what an amazing picnic blanket. Or when you're going out, you know, sitting outside in the evening to just put it around you. Just you. pop it around your shoulders mm. and keep yourself warm, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. So this one is all um, special DK, so it's 100% acrylic. I think there's one, one ball is the fuchsia. Ah, oh, the fuchsia I think is that's life, life, isn't it? Because Lucia wanted that definite pink. Yes, yeah, so the one ball, the um, fuchsia is life, which is 20% wool. Yeah. 25% wool, 75% acrylic, mm. just because of the colourway mm. to make that's that work. That's right, that's right. Which is fair yeah. enough. Right, so there's more people who have the Eastern Jewels in their baskets 
than we have available. So if you've got it in your basket, you really, really need to check out. But don't worry, you can check out more than once. Um, can we just have a quick talk about crochet hooks? Yes. Because for everyone who hasn't got them. So I've got three and a half, four and four and a half. Yes. So is that for all three of them? Um, I tend to use a combination of hook sizes. I know a lot of projects are just using one, like a four millimeter is like the standard. Right. Um, but I often use a tighter, a smaller hook when I do treble stitches because they can get a bit loose. So I think on the border I've used a smaller hook. Okay. And somewhere else I might have used a bigger hook. Right. Yes. Um, gets a bit complicated, but it just keeps everything in check. Yes, so for the Persian tiles and the Eastern jewels, you need three and a half and four. Yeah. So four and a half must be for that one. Yeah, might well be. So if you don't have a three and a half and a four mil hook, you need to pop that in your basket as well. And the four. If you're getting the Eastern jewels or the Persian tiles, <laughs> then you need to put them as well. And stitch markers. I've also got, so you will need stitch markers. So they are on there as well. So if you click on watch live, Scroll down from there, you'll see the stitch markers because you will need stitch markers to know where you are. Forty yes. ninety nine. you've got a whole box of them because you'll need, it's nice to actually have them in different colours as well because that really helps. Um, right, I'm going to move this all out of the way and then we'll do, oh, I'm not sure how I'm going to move it all out of the way <laughs> without losing it all. The um, Summer Palace, yes, this is gorgeous. Still haven't decided which my favourite one is yet. So... This is the Summer Palace. Shall I just try and hold it up? Hang on, I've lost my needles. <laughs> right, actually, I, luckily I can see through. Oh, it's so nice to see them held up like that. Yeah. It's really lovely. Because that's how you want to see yeah, it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's what it looks like. Isn't that beautiful? I see, and I can see through it as well. Yeah, it's so handy. nice seeing it held up like that, yeah. It's oh. got a beautiful border as well, hasn't it? Lots Isn't of bubbles, yeah. Gorgeous. So that is the Summer Palace. I mean, it does come in different colourways. We've just done the kit with the blue pink. That's why it says blue pink, because there are other colourways to it. But if we have a look at it, let's turn it around the right way. In close-up, look at the border. I think, to me, borders are so important. Oh, I love they? borders. <laughs> are you, uh, yeah, no, I do. I love a border. And I spend quite a lot of time thinking about a border yeah. as well. But I like this one. They're it's got like bubbles. A like a frame, aren't they? They just finish it off. How many borders have you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I like this border around the edge. That's, yeah. I often finish my blankets like that. It's just done with a slip stitch at the very edge and it gives oh, it that okay. kind of, almost like a roll. Can you, it looks the same from both sides, so it looks kind of neat. It looks like you've chain stitched, doesn't it? Yeah, like yeah but I haven't. Yeah, you do a row of DK, uh, double crochet and then you do a slip stitch all the way back. Oh, okay. And it gives you that nice that's chain. that's beautiful. Yeah. So tell me, this is the, uh, uh, the kit is there at the moment, so that's forty four ninety nine. You get the full instructions. There are two colourways of this. Yeah. Obviously, we've got the blue pink colourway, but that's the picture of the other one because I think you've got. Um, yeah, we did have it somewhere. The other colour. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. I don't know where that's gone then. We did have it, didn't we? Oh, it's. I can see it. Shall I get it? Yeah, go on then. Go on then. I mean, the kit that we've got is for the blue pink which is the one that i've got on my desk but just so you can see because it's always nice to see isn't it this is the other colorway that jane designed it yeah, oh go. you can hold it up sorry. oh okay i'll hold it so this was the original <laughs> one <laughs> that's so oh, that's the original up. one that's, okay so this is the first one i did mm. um but you can see it's very um well it's all the same it is like all daisies. the same colours. Yeah, it was inspired by. It's a snowy one. It's a wintry colourway. Right. Okay. So that was my kind of. It was almost like a kind of Nordic, yeah. inspired with the red and the blue and the cream flowers. Mm. Um, but then you see, I love colour. I just adore it. So I didn't feel. I like this one, but that's that was better. Yeah. So we redid it in um, the pinks and blues. I'm going to put it all across my desk. Yeah. So this one has got a lot of yarn in it, hasn't it? I'm going to have to get it. Now, this one is nearly all. So this one is $44.99, but it's nearly all in life. And life is your um, 
wool acrylic mix but it's got other yarns in it as well hasn't it it's got a whole mix of yarns um yeah it's got a little bit of batik in it which is the one that's got a little sort of so we've tweedy got fern life which is the wool acrylic mix then we've got fuchsia life we've got um heather I think. heather yeah. which is slightly speckled mm. that's quite nice isn't it hopefully i've got them all here and then we've got olive life mm -hmm. You can see all the colours now, can't you? We've got Mint Life, and then we've got this lovely batik. Mm, it's gorgeous. So what's batik made from? So that's wool and acrylic. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's is it dyed in a different way? It's, it's, I think it's like a print dye. It's almost like printed as it okay. uh, goes through the dyeing process. And it gives it that slight sort of tweedy Yeah, look. so actually, if you look at the blanket now, because we're overhead, so it's um, like this yeah, area here. Yeah, that one. And it does give a lovely look, doesn't it? And then it has, um, in the acrylic, it has the purple and the sort of the pinky fuchsia colour. Mm. So this is a more of a wool blanket. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 20, 25% wool, wool and, and acrylic. It's yeah. a different thing. But you yeah. also get the full pattern. Now let's have a look at the pattern because um, they're always amazing. Right, so the Eastern Jewels quilt is sold quilt. <laughs> so you're sewing coming out. I was on quilts earlier. <laughs> Blanket has sold out. <clears throat> and the Persian towels as well. So we're just on the Summer Palace now. Wow. But look, again, it's exactly the same as the other instructions. Everything that you need to know is on it. Um, it looks like you have this looks like we haven't got as so much here because the only reason is it's, we couldn't get it all on the table so for example <laughs> you get three balls of this one but it looks like we haven't got it all i was thinking why then i've worked it out so you get more than one ball of some of these colorways so the batik you get three balls of you and there are other colors that you get more than one ball of. we just I happen to have one here but honestly everything that you need for the kit is in here we just couldn't get it all onto the table <laughs> But it does look like you haven't got as much yeah. as the number of balls. Yeah. Um, but there is everything you need to make this beautiful blanket, which is 48 and a half inches square. Again, all full colour photos, everything you need to know, even the diagram of joining it. There's so you did oh so you have a separate section for the blue yes, and pink. Yes, so the blue and pink is shown at the back again because it's a, a, a different colourway to the original one that's at the front. So th right. there you've got your sub list again at the back. So you've got both in the same brochure. Ah, okay. This is making sense And now. obviously you've got more than one colourway for the flowers on this one. So it shows each individual flower colourway. Right, okay. No, that's all making sense now. I like the diagram as well. Yeah, that they're really good, helps, aren't they? Like it? a layout diagram. Yeah, help you see where to put everything. So where do we start with this one then? In terms of making, yes, yes, so or any of it really. Okay, so you just make the just. I shouldn't say just, just should I? It's to beginners, especially. So it's made from these little um, mandalas, crochet mandala flowers. Okay, and each one, I think there's about six or seven different colourways. All oh, right, so these, are the, <coughs> yes, I can yeah, see it's these all the same motif, here. just yes. in different colours using a different order. So right. I can always do a little bit of a demo if you want yes, to see you? how to yes, start them. To uh, well, yes, because everyone does it slightly differently and you are the queen of the crochet <laughs> blanket. So <laughs> we would love to see how you do it. <laughs> love me, you are. Yeah. Okay, so I don't know whether, can you see my hands? Yeah, if you have your, well, you can see on I'm screen. kind of here. If you Is move that? to where you yep. can see. Perfect. Okay. So this one starts, I always start my, um, if I'm working in the round, we said it already, I always do a chain start not a magic loop mm. or magic ring so i'm going to start by making four chain and you know i always get asked about when people are learning to crochet about holding the hook and holding the yarn and what's the right way and i always say there isn't a right way you just do it however you want right. to do it okay okay so i've made my four chain and then i'm going to do a slip stitch into the first chain like that to um, make it into a ring now I've got a little tip here is can you see my tail there mm. that's the sort of starting tail sometimes you can see that at the beginning of your first round you see a little kind of bump in your crochet so I always take the tail over the hook to the other side 
oh, like that, and okay. then do my slip stitch. Yeah, I yeah. yes. If I don't do a magic ring and I do that, I always get that bump. Yeah. So by taking, shall I do that again? Yeah, go on. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. It's a really good little tip. It is a really good tip. I so like here that. is my four chain. Mm. I'm going to put my hook into the first chain. And it doesn't matter where you go, whether you go at the top of that chain or the bottom. I go in and then I hold the little chainy bit and move the tail over the hook. Does that sort of take it to the inside or something? It then? takes the slip knot. You know you start with yeah, the slip yeah. knot. Yeah. It takes the slip knot to the back of the slip stitch. Right. So it's here at the very back. Okay. So that when I do my slip stitch, that that slip knot is at the back. Perfect. Which is where you want it. Well, that's okay. a brilliant tip. So tip number one. Tip number one. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to fill my ring up with eight stitches. And another thing that I do is I kind of use my thumb to open up the ring before okay. I start, kind of, you know, push it a yeah. bit so that I've opened up the ring. So I'm going to do one chain to start because you know often you, well, you do almost always, you do your one chain that gets you to the height of your row or round. So I've done one chain and then I'm going to fill up this ring with eight double crochet. So I go into the ring, catch the yarn and go through the two loops again. And I'm going to do that eight times. So this is three, this is four, made sure I'm kind of halfway around because I've got to get eight in there, five, six, seven, seven and eight. On the eighth one I often go over that tail as well so I move the tail to my left side, to my right side. I don't know my right from my left. <laughs> I don't really don't, which is always a bit of a worry if you're in the car. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know it. Might, it drives my husband mad, but there we go. Okay, so I've got eight double crochet uh, in the ring. Okay. And then I'm going to do a slip stitch. And a lot of people don't know where to do their slip stitch when they finish. Um, but I go under the very first chain that you can see running along the top. So I go under the whole thing there, sort of push it against my finger, mm -hmm. go in and draw the yarn through. So that's my slip stitch. Now what a lot of people do at this point is they do an extra chain before they cut their yarn. But that's another thing that I don't do. Do you do that? Do you think you do that when you finish? No. Do a chain of... No, no, I don't think so. Okay. So some people do. And it gives a little kind of bump right. at the end there. So when I finish, I've done my slip stitch, I will then cut my yarn, leave quite a nice long tail actually, that's another thing. Leave it quite long, like that. And then I just gently draw the yarn through the stitch and then with my hook from behind. Can you see I've put that in from behind there? Yeah. And then I draw that tail through to the back. Okay. Yeah, see I pull it through first, but then does that doing it that way? Yeah, this doing it this way means you don't get a bump at the end of yeah, your round. Yeah. And which you get you, a clearer kind of stitch count because sometimes you can mistake that bump for a stitch and you end do. up with the wrong yeah, stitch. Yeah, so I count. normally cut it, then pull it through, but you cut it and then you do it with your crochet yeah, hook. From behind. From behind. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it gives you a kind of neater ring. I wish I just have a notebook. Top tip number three. <laughs> I've just you about. That's brilliant. That's so neat because it yeah. looks finished. Yeah, exactly. It gives it that really neat little look, doesn't it? And that's it? just just that's the centre. That's the centre bit. Yeah. So they with look this tighter. one, that's lovely. So you can have a look and go right. How many? What colour do I need to make those centres? Don't you? You can go right. Well, I need nine centres in fusion. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's quite nice. Yeah, though, so you do it, it in that production line way yeah, again. Yeah, I would. Make your nine and then go on to your next colour. Mm. The great thing about working in a production line way is it makes you remember the pattern for that yeah. round yeah. each time. Because I think you forget, yeah. which is ridiculous. Especially it? when it gets complicated. Yes. You know, if you've done a complicated round and then you have to go back and do it all over again, you know, four mm. days down the line, it will have gone out of your mind. Yeah. Yes. So doing it as a production line does okay. make it so much easier. Yeah. Right, so that's round one. Yeah. Do you want to see the next round? Yeah, let's do round two. Okay. I'm with you now. <laughs> with you now on round two. So on the next round, you're going to double your stitch count. So whereas we've got eight double crochet, we're going to have 16 trebles. 
right? Yes. Okay? yes. And that's a very standard way crochet works. You all you double up on right. your first round. We've got a nice message. One moment. <laughs> okay. Like a message. Okay. Um, it's coming across the bottom. <laughs> They are all so beautiful. I wasn't quick enough, so I hope you get some more kits in soon from Emma. We will try. We will, yes. Yeah. Well, we, you know, this is the first time Jane's been on air. As I said, this is not like complete, total beginner. This is kind of your next stage, so we have to see how it goes, but now we know. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. I hope um, people Definitely. are being inspired. Question to kind from of Melissa. Hi, ladies. Great to see you, Jane. Will you do the winter colourway for this one in the future? Thanks, Alicia. <laughs> we'll try. Well, we'll try, <laughs> but honestly, the biggest problem has been getting hold of the yarn, because because a lot of these use the Starcraft Life DK yarn. It's been really difficult to get hold of it because what would happen is I've got all of it except for one colour. Yeah, we could always do them in special though, couldn't we? Yes, you can do them we in could special. Because they often sub the colours. You can very the, close the special DK, which is the acrylic, is much easier. The life DK, DK. I mean, everywhere, all yarn manufacturers are having, mm. have had problems since the beginning mm. of lockdown. To mm. be honest, absolutely, they? yeah. So I didn't want to do the kits until we had all of the right colours. So we will try, yes, because we love all the colourways <laughs> and the other and the fruit garden. Yeah, I think we can yeah, that'd be that good. One. Yeah. Okay, sorry. sorry. Okay, round so two. so round two. I'm going to start um, doing trebles which is a taller stitch with a longer post. So I don't start with a standing treble. Some people do a thing called a standing treble. I always start with my chain. Right. Right, because it just confuses people if I put that in a pattern. So I'm going to start, you can see my sort of tails here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start away from them. I'm going to start on the other side. And I never do a change of colour on the stitch. I always finish my round, cut it off, and then start my new colour. Right. You get a much neater join. Do you do that on the edges? So if you were I doing always, on edges yeah, as well? Yeah, I do. Okay. I do. I do it on every round. So I'll finish my round, cut my yarn and start somewhere else. Right. Because I think the thing with crochet that can look, well, it's just a frustration really with crochet, is you can see where your join is when you're yeah, working around. Yeah, that's true. And it almost becomes like a scar, doesn't it? Do you know right. what I mean? Yeah, do you know I what do, I mean? Yeah, and I do work. Because it's yeah. always it in that slightly same different. Place. The end is different. Yeah. You're yeah. no getting away from that. Yeah, that's right. And it's one of those, there's nothing you can do no. about it. So by joining your yarn in a different place, it means you won't get that right. scar running okay. through. Okay. So I've got my, if you think my tails are down there at six o'clock, I'm going to start up here at 12 o'clock. I'm going to go into the whole of the stitch there and draw my new mint yarn through. I'm not doing the colours that are in the blanket, by the way. I'm just doing <laughs> yeah, just random, random colours. That's fine. It doesn't random need to colours. be the same colours. Okay. It's just different colours is nice. Yes. <laughs> I think these are all colours that are used in all the blankets, yeah, just not in the right colorway. order. Some yeah. are going, can we do it in that colourway? <laughs> yeah. It's like all the notes, but in all the wrong order. But more common wise. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> I love, I love that. that. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> love that sketch. You young people out there won't know what we're talking about. <laughs> You've missed out. Okay, sorry, distractions. Okay, so I've joined, I've pulled my yarn through. There again, they use, leave quite a nice long tail because these mm. are important because if you don't leave long tails, you can pull it all the way through and it right. can unravel. So I've left a nice long tail and I've done one chain to join in. I then do another chain, which is the um, first one of my three that I need to do the um, mm. starting turning chain. And then I do another little thing. I put my tail end of yarn over my working yarn like that so that it doesn't come undone. That's good because quite often what I do is I do the first chain with the two, the tail ah, and the working. Yes. But it is a bit bulky. Yes. Whereas that Yes. It's not as bulky. No, and it means it won't come undone. But catches it in. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? That's very it's really good. good. So if you look at that mm. from the back now, that is well caught yes. in. It's not going to go anywhere. I that hand one. washed my granny square jumper the other week and some of it came undone. And yeah. I hand washed it. Yeah. So it must have been because I hadn't sewed the tails in properly. So this is why I always leave long Whereas ends. that? Always mm. leave a really long end and do quite a lot of sewing in. But... That little bit as well anchors yeah, it more, it will make a, it? Yeah, it'll make a difference. Oh, I like this. It's, it's like yeah. my own personal lesson, this. <laughs> Have you lot out there enjoying watching it? Have <laughs> <laughs> you got any questions? <laughs> so I've done my three chain, which mm. is my starting point. And then, as I said, we're going to double up the stitch count. So I'm going to do two stitches into every stitch from the previous round. Mm. So this three chain counts as my first one. 
and then I'm going to do another stitch into the same place and I'm going to do a treble. So treble, you go round the hook first with your yarn into the stitch and catch through. You've got three loops on your hook. Actually, it's not a brilliant colour, is it? Can you see it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Three loops on your hook and you catch your yarn and go through two of them, reposition and go through the final two. And that's a treble. Okay. Yeah. So, you so can you've see got there's, your two troubles there's two in, in there. Right, lovely. Yeah, so one is not quite the same as the other. One is your, turn, your starting chain, and then you've got one true treble. A real treble. A real treble, yes. And then into each stitch all the way round, I'm going to do two trebles. So that's one. Yarn so do you, I suppose you're, you don't need to use a marker because... Oh, I do. Okay, I oh, think because you're I changing do. colour so you can see where the beginning is. Yeah, I use markers all the time. I use them to, you know, make sure I know where my corners are or show where I've changed colour or just to, you know, make sure that when I pick up my, uh, my work the next day, I know where I am. True. You know, in the pattern. Yes. So I, use I was just them. thinking when you're changing colour each one, that's quite nice, but yeah. I love, I, I like these because they're different colours. Because then I can Have use you got them. the little sheepy ones? Is that what you've got? The little, they're like little sheep, aren't they? No, then, oh, I don't know, are they? Do they look at their um, clover? Because I yeah. like clover accessories. Yeah, I do too, really Basically, nice. Basically, we have the things that I like. So <laughs> <laughs> Which is nice, isn't it? Um, we do have some, we really have the things I like. I do like clover accessories because they come in nice boxes. And they're thought about as well. Yeah, they're really nice. Their stuff's good quality. Really nice stuff. Do you think that? Yeah, I guess they do the thing. They look like sheep. I think they are supposed to look like little sheep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I'd never thought about that. But they're all different sizes as yeah, well. You've that's got little really ones good. Yeah. and big ones. I'd never thought of that. I love clover stuff, though. I found circular stitch holders the other day. Bought some of those. Nice. For Yarn Lane. Never seen those before. Very nice. For knitting. Yeah. Yeah, they're amazing. good for... They do, actually, when you look at the bigger ones. I think they are. They are like little sheep. They are little sheep, aren't they? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you'd be a bit worried if you saw one in the field, wouldn't you? But they do yeah, look but a I'd bit like never, sheep. Yeah, but I'd never thought about that, <laughs> that they'd look like little sheep. <laughs> they should say that then, shouldn't they? Anyway, those are the stitch. But they're good because you've got some really tiny ones and then you've got the more chunky ones, just pending. Yeah. Because you don't want the really tiny ones for big, thick super chunky things no. but no, okay cool. Cool. so 1499 anyway yeah, and different colors really help they I do because yeah. you can choose where you put them yeah and they're nice and bendy well if you've learned nothing else today you've learned these stitch markers look like sheep <laughs> <laughs> yes let's hope you've taken a few crochet let's take away take a well. little <laughs> bit more in and not just the sheep right i'm nearly at the end shall i just finish this yeah, off yeah yeah Okay, so I'm, let's just go back. There we go. It. Okay, so I've, I've now got 16 stitches. So it's right. this whole thing about your... Where your, do we join? Yeah, so I, um, you know I said to you on that first round, I go under the first chain that's heading in that direction. Yes. It's different when you've done treble crochet because you started with three chain and right. not a true stitch. Okay. So I'm going to go into the third chain up. So I can see there, that's my first one, second one third one and I'm going to put my hook into the centre of that third chain up. So you only go under one strand of the I chain. actually go under two oh, okay. if I can and if I can't I often you you know you, obviously your hook has got that hook shape to it yeah. um, <laughs> which is <laughs> obvious thing to say but I sometimes if I can't find it I actually use it kind of back to front to find oh, there okay. like that oh I haven't found it. And go under two parts of the chain, yeah, if not you just can, one. Yeah, okay. Because that just gives you a neater. There you go. Yeah. I'm under two. It gives you a neater join. It's these little bits, isn't it? That when you've learned how to hold the hook and do chains, it's these little bits that give you that finish. Yeah, yeah. That sort of prof almost professional yeah. finish. That Jane Crowfoot look. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there we go. I've done my slip stitch, and I'm about to just. So again, I don't then do that cut. extra stitch. No. But some people do. You cut the cut yarn. Cut the yarn nice and long. Pull it through, which looks dangerous. It does look dangerous, but like you have that. to trust yourself. Just go. So deep you can breaths. pinch it if you like, mm. but just gently pull. It won't come undone. But you sort of feel it will. <laughs> it won't. <laughs> it won't. <laughs> and then you put your hook through that same stitch where you did that slip stitch from the back there. And just draw 
that yarn through to the back of the work. Perfect. Because some really I have nice seen people do that with a needle. I think nice oh, I couldn't finish. be bothered to get a needle out. But if you're doing it with the hook, then that's fine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Some people do sew that in at mm. the end. You don't really need I to. No, I, I wouldn't be bothered. On your final round, you could do it. It would look really neat. But as you go, you wouldn't need to do that. Wow. Yeah. That's lovely. We got time to do another round. Yeah, let's do another round. Yeah, another round. Let's do another round. Oh, what about if I show you how I sew my ends in? Yes. Would that oh, be a God, good I thing? Oh, God, I would love that. Yeah? I would love that because I. nobody ever seems to be able to tell me how to do that. They just say do it several times. Yes. So I think so that's... Yes. Yes. <laughs> when you say about, you know, your... It's really frustrating, your granny square jumper coming to apart. Yes, because I washed it by hand yeah, really carefully. Yeah, yeah, and it happens a lot. I think it's it's really important that you sew in properly. So well, I sew them all in, but clearly not yes. adequately. It's just, I think it's just not enough. Right. And what a lot of people do is they leave all the sewing in to the end yes. as well, and I do it as I go along. When you say go along, do you mean each round? Yeah, pretty, or? pretty much. <gasps> <laughs> so, like, <laughs> just tipped a load of people over the edge. Yeah, I'm like, like, it's like, yeah, but so I guess in it's as you go. It's horrible doing it at the end, though, isn't it? It is. So, like, here I've done two rounds. Mm. So, this is the point at which I would sew in the orange. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, I'm going to sew gonna in this, this longer one. I've got a nice big fat sewing needle. And then, because crochet creates, crochet is almost like a clamp, isn't it? The stitch is like a kind of clamp around what you've done already yes. it creates a tunnel so okay. when you sew in if I kind of go around the back of these stitches I'm not going to go through to the front because I'm in a tunnel yeah okay because you're on the kind of the other yeah. side of the chain yeah so I'm at the of back thing. of the back of the stitch yeah so I'm going around in through those stitches and move that one out of the way and I'm just going to go all the way around that all through every through the tunnel of every stitch. Yeah, we have got yeah we have got wool needles. Very important. I like these wool needles. They're well. very good. Oh, you've got those nice knit yeah, pro. Yeah, they're lovely. I love knit pro as well. They're mm. very nice. So, um, well, I like these because they're really easy to thread. Have they got a slight bend in them? No, they haven't. Are oh, they the straight ones? But they've got um, a loop. Oh yes, they're really good. They're really really good. Yeah, Especially there's a bigger you, picture. Yeah, they're great. So they're kind of easier to... Yeah, they're but they're brilliant. reasonably pointy. Yeah, they're good. So yeah. I suppose you only have things I like, and I like these. And they're coloured, which and is And they're coloured. <laughs> Anything with a colour. But brilliant. they're quite pointy, which helps yeah. with the yeah. sewing in. Only one ninety yeah. nine. Worth it. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Love a gadget. <laughs> right. So I've gone all the way round. So I've gone through my eight stitches. And then, so again, you can't see that from either side and then what I do is well you're a sewer so you'll know I do a few back stitches okay so I'm gonna go back on myself and purposely split my needle through the yarn that I've just gone back with can you so we're going that? through a couple then you do a back stitch but splitting the yarn. yeah you know if you've ever done it by accident yes really, really. and then you can't blame and undo ever. it no. so I've split through my yarn on purpose oh, look how close that's good Joe. fantastic well look at that there. So it's almost like a back stitch. So I'm going to go back again <laughs> and then forwards. It's a bit like a you know drunk man down the road. Two steps forward, one step back. So I'm going to go back and then purposely split, split the yarn through the yarn. I can't believe how much I've learned in the last hour. There we Brilliant. go. I've done another one. I'm going to go move in with Jane. So then <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice because I haven't done workshops for ages. <laughs> so oh, it's so lovely to. Be showing a few techniques. So two steps forward. Well, and the yarn lay viewers are going to love this. And one step back, and again split through that yarn. There we go. That's probably enough. Okay. And then just forward a bit more. And then when I cut the yarn, mm. I don't go. I would never cut right up close and to the work. I leave about a centimetre mm. like that, so that then if I ease that back. I can be sure that nothing's going to come undone in there. That's brilliant. I've can you always that's already moved. I've just made it up all these years. Yeah. Now I know. Yeah. It's brilliant. And so then I always block mm. as well. Do you block your crochet? I do. Yeah. I am a very ardent blocker. Good girl. Because um, someone said the other day that you don't need to block acrylic, but I don't think that's true. You do. 
You do, don't you? you? Do, definitely. Block everything. Everything. It makes such a difference, mm. honestly. And so blocking this would mean that, that that tail might move a bit more. It might come out a no, little bit No, I do. I've got a blocking board with pins. I've got blocking mats. I've got blocking wires. Yeah, brilliant. There is brilliant. something beautiful about a thing being blocked. Because even yeah. with acrylic, because a lot of people, we're having this chat in our cowl group that somebody said you don't need to block acrylic, but I think you do. I think you do, especially if you've been, you know, if you've been crocheting for a long time and you've been putting those pieces in your bag and traveling around with, you know, all your mm. different motifs, then definitely they need to be blocked. Yeah, makes a big difference. And because the acrylic different. does go back, goes to a shape. Because somebody said oh, it just goes back in, but it doesn't, it doesn't. No, I would always block everything. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. We've run out. We're just about to run out of time. Thank you so much, Jane. We You're will welcome. have you back on air as soon as we can and we cool. can get some kits. We Great. only have one kit left, which is the Summer Palace Blue and Pink colourway, the one that's sitting on my desk, which looks like the most beautiful tablecloth, actually. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Forty four ninety nine single figures left. All the yarn. It's not all the yarn that's on the table because we haven't got all the colours there. We've only got one of each ball. But you do get all the yarn you need and the full instructions to make this and it's got loads of lovely lovely close-up photo really easy to understand please do remember the day that you watch john lane today 25th and re-watch this when you get your kit because there are so many tips i wanted to write notes re-watch <laughs> it will be on available on youtube from tomorrow just put in yarn lane 25th of october and you'll see um anyway yarn lane will be back on wednesday Christmas socks, yes, we've got, quite excited about one. We've got Winnick Mum, Christine Perry, and Anna Nikoprovich, who are going to do the crochet sock, knitting sock shawl show extravaganza with um, West Yorkshire Spinners brand new Christmas yarn. So that's a bit of a treat having both, and what a lucky week we've got. Anyway, thank you so much. Um, I will see you back here next Monday. <laughs>